sitting with us, Kane Sosa. So, Manju, if you want to quickly introduce what we do, and then I can take over. Okay. Thanks a lot. So, <clears throat> let me quickly introduce myself. I'm Manju Devdas, and I have the business practices at Bowtree. So, we are a mid-sized company, not too big, not too small. Um, we are working with various um, <clears throat> various large and mid-sized customers on the subject big data and social mining. What we are going to walk you through, and Salil will be the main speaker for this, is how we have taken social mining and big data and enabled it for one of our actual customers. There are not many companies who have done this. Uh, I'll spend a very few minutes uh, talking about the background and, uh, and a little bit about the use case eventually. And uh, so the key, uh, key focus here is how do you make this all real, right? We are also a product engineering partner with Oracle, and what we are gonna listen or hear over here in this session, some of it might actually end up in Oracle product in the coming releases. We are working with the Oracle value chain planning, we're working with the fusion pricing and many different areas, because Oracle's ecosystem has many of these components. Now, they're looking for practical advice from somebody like us to bring this all together. So what you'll see here in the content is, initially I'll just give a little bit of background, then I'll turn it over to Salil, is the actual practical use case. And along with that, <clears throat> we'll make it a little bit more interactive because it's about using the technology to drive your business change is what is the most important element, and that's our value addition. So we are, without going too deep in it, we are a mid-sized company, uh, we are a partner with Oracle, and <clears throat> we are also partnered with many of these big data uh, companies, Cloud Era, and, and these days, you know, like almost everybody else is in, in it. So I'll skip through some of our solutions. Um, we are, one of our key strengths is analytics, but analytics in the context of a domain or vertical or solving a specific business problem is what we focus on. Many of you have worked on, or are already working on value chain uh, planning. It's, it's nothing new, it's always been for centuries, it's been around, but what is it different now? What is, how, how is business gonna transform with, with, with this new, new set of technologies and capabilities is at the highest level to, <coughs> To give you an actual uh, practical example, with one of the key toy manufacturing company, we presented to their uh, key stakeholders yesterday, and you'll see some of the responses towards the end of the me end of the presentation. And the next logical step is to meet their board and CEO next week to show them what we have discovered about their business, how it will drive the value chain planning, and how. And their initial response is, "This will fundamentally change our business." We'll get into the details, but whenever people, customers are making a comment like that, there are three key things they're looking at, right? How do I continue to grow my business? How do I do that securely? Because there are so many different devices coming into play and machine-to-machine -machine co communications are happening. At the same time, as I'm growing the business, I also want to reduce my cost through productivity. We continuously look for how to bring these different technology solutions to drive some of these things. Because whether you're an analyst trying to enter your forecast and you care about not entering too many times or using social mining information to drive your better accuracy of your demand or, or how price affects your demand and so on, or the growth, which product drives how much growth, at, at different levels in the organization, folks care about this. So now let's get into the, the core of the subject and we'll get later into the actual use case and get into the depth. So let's, thanks Manju. So just to give a brief, brief background about myself, I've got a lot of experience in supply chain solutions. I was with Cisco Systems for 12 plus years and after that I've been with consulting companies implementing uh, supply chain based and even value chain solutions, what we call from the lead to order to order to cash, the entire process. So that's my brief background. Uh, I'm going to present to you uh, today an actual solution that we have implemented at a customer or we are in the process of implementing at a customer 
And I'm also going to present to you some of the ideas that I have worked with Manju and Kane, where we know we can take more opportunities uh, that are happening in the industry today, that you will see, we have, I mean, that particular case has not been solved, but I see it as an opportunity. So I'm going to give you a flavor of that when we go through the use cases. Uh, I realized that there was a similar presentation before this. Uh, I'm going to focus more on how we have done it and give you the architecture behind that solution and talk about uh, the details of the use case when we get to that. So uh, I expect that the interactive session will happen more during when we discuss the use case, but feel free to stop me if you have any questions as I go through. So quick, for though I, some of you already know a lot about big data, I just want to throw this slide up there. I'm sorry, it's sort of an eye chart. It's just an introduction for those of you who don't know big data by now. I'm expecting everybody to. I'm not going to talk more about big data other than the context of using it in supply chain and value chain management. But essentially, the key areas where we feel that big data can make a difference is A, you need to use unstructured information or semi-structured information to make a business decision and use it in context of your already existing systems where either the velocity of the data is too high, okay, or your data is too, uh, too much unstructured, so you need to have a way to manipulate it into a business decision framework. That's pretty much here, and you can see, you hear the, earlier you used to hear of gigabytes, now you hear of petabytes and zettabytes. Okay, these are the volumes we are talking about. So, here are some of the missed opportunities. A lot of focus on big data today stops at the front end of the process. What I mean by that is, there's a lot of activity around big data and it's used in terms of how do I use big data in context of business intelligence or actionable intelligence to drive my marketing, as an example. There's a lot of focus around that. A uh, lot of that work is already happening. However, we, there is, as I will show you, there are a lot of instances where you can actually take the same information, the insight that you get from customer preferences, from your unstructured information, like all the social media, and you can actually use it to do your what if scenario analysis to make sure that your end-to-end -end business process is actually managed in a better manner. Uh, I think um, the previous presenter touched a little bit on this, I'm going to take it one step further. So, the three elements that I talked about where you can use, one is you can use customer insights to what I call as make much more accurate demand decisions. You can improve the accuracy of your demand, not only from a marketing perspective, but also take it all the way through to your supply chain. Right from where you take the marketing, the sales, the marrying it with your operations, the balance your supply and demand equation and makes do some what if scenario analysis and make a better demand planning uh, 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 decision that will actually save you cost. Okay, that's the whole idea. You can improve revenue also, but now you're also going to make intelligent decisions on how you do your investment to manage your supply chain. The second aspect of it is a lot of companies, especially with a lot of downward pressure on pricing, to improve uh, profitability, the given thing is you got to reduce your cost. Well, you can use a lot of the methods now where you can get better insight into what's happening, not only in the marketplace, uh, but also your supply chain, to see how you can drive down the cost to more than what you actually have been doing. Uh, we are actually just presented a solution to this particular aspect to one of our customers, and it was it has been well received. Uh, another one, one, another one I want to talk about here, and this is what we are going to emphasize a little bit in the case study that we are going to show you later on, is you can take the customer insights not only from the discussions. But also, a lot of information is available with all the after-sales service that happens. So you can take all that service information, the warranty information, you can feed the learnings about your quality, about your product or service to make a better product 
or change a product and make a better product that will actually drive more revenue. And by, again, by improving the quality, you are going to reduce the cost. And if one of the use cases you see it happening, that's one use case where I see uh, there's an opportunity, but I don't see anybody doing anything about it. We have been talking about it. We are going to look at the opportunity to work with the right customer and again, provide a solution there. So, examples of this. The first one, one of our customers, this was a very interesting use case. Uh, in Europe, soccer is very, very, uh, like, public is crazy about soccer, just like how in US, baseball, basketball, and NFL is, you know, you drive the craze. Uh, particularly, there has been one team that has done very well in the last two years in the Europe, what they call as British Premier League. Anyway, to cut a long story short, all the companies usually bet on the Manchester United, all these, the Chelsea's and all these popular teams. So they're well prepared to sell to these, uh, to their customers on paraphernalia about, you know, with the team icons, like what I'm talking about is uh, to toys or bands that the girls wear or, you know, the helmets and all that stuff that goes on when people buy it to go to the games and the pom-poms and all of that. Interestingly, you, this one company, instead of using the traditional Nielsen method, they, a lot of these companies get their marketing data from Nielsen. In this situation, they basically said, let's just use big data. It was an experiment. Let's just see. Let's look at some blogs where people are talking about what's happening in the soccer world, and let's see what leanings we can get from there. What they learned was that this particular team, it was Manchester City, was growing in popularity, and they realized that, hmm, we have not been really focusing on that particular team to put stuff in the market, I mean, to be prepared for the demand when it comes up. So they found it out, and then they said, did some what if scenario analysis to say, okay, how much of this increase in demand is going to happen? They got that insight, but what will that do even to our capability to fulfill that demand? Because that was the important piece. They found out that if they had to take this demand, and if it happened as per expectation, they would have to make some investment in making sure that they were ready for it in the supply chain to have all those goods delivered in time when this demand was going to peak, which was towards the end of the season, as the uh, Premier League got into the final four or five weeks. They were prepared, their competition was not, and they made a killing selling Manchester City's uh, paraphernalia. And I'll talk a little bit about that use case in detail on what the solution looked like there. The second one, uh, this is uh, not our customer, but this is something I just want to point out. Uh, I have gone to this chain, it's McDonald's. I was amazed every time that how can McDonald's maintain the consistency of their quality. I'm not saying that their food is great. All I'm saying is you go anywhere in the world, how do they maintain the quality and in such a precise manner? There was an article about eight weeks ago or 10 weeks ago that I ran into where they actually talked about how McDonald's is using big data to not only drive the marketing piece, but they're actually using big data to have those insights, look into the supply chain, make sure that the supply chain uh, quality and all the best that they have to do is driven with the precise manner that they expect. So it was very interesting for me that such a large organization and that also McDonald's also a big Oracle shop that they were also using big data. So it was a validation of some of the things that we were already thinking and what we had seen with our customer. And then the last one, this is the one example where I would love to work with a customer to help this through. I'm amazed at the amount of recalls and billions of dollars, I mean every time you hear about this, Toyota, Honda, all of these guys have all these massive recalls that cost them billions of dollars. The po point I was talking about taking information about quality, if you can take that information, and today it's not necessarily unstructured, this is structured information. Some of you may argue because all, all the time you hear about big data is, oh, it's all about using unstructured information. Well, remember, big data is also about using volume to uh, manage data which is huge in volume. So quality information is huge in volume. There are 
today's issues are it remains in silos uh, or it is too, too voluminous to be used to make some business decisions. This is one opportunity where you can use this enormous amount of information. You can put it in a, you see the architecture that I will show you, in a big data architecture, you can use like MapReduce and some of the contacts to get meaningful insights which will be in terms of potential trends that you can then proactively detect, in my opinion. You can detect this potentially and uh, avoid a uh, recall down the road. An example of this is today Mercedes-Benz, and these are actual things I've heard, but these have not been solved yet. There are many times where Mercedes-Benz customers go into the shop, they hear some like uh, creak when they press their brakes, they go to their car, get their car service, and nothing wrong comes out of the diagnostic. Now, in this particular example, if this trend is detected, that okay, a lot of people are bringing, complaining about this, because this goes as notes, okay? These are not structured information. Imagine that you can take these exact notes, and you can say, hey, this is a trend that's happening, Maybe somebody needs to look at the design of those brake assemblies and see if it is potential for a recall down the road. This is an example of what I'm talking about, a practical example of how not only can you use big data, not only can you use social mining, but you can also funnel it into your existing systems to make a business decision that will benefit the organization. Now, I'll just give a brief outline of the solution overview, and then from there, we'll quickly go into the uh, interactive session with the case, so we can have a lot of your thoughts and have an interactive session for that. Uh, this is the solution, business process architecture diagram of the solution. Uh, what I want to show here is today, a lot of work comes from big data. There's a lot of focus. Get the insights, customer preferences, and stop here. What's the opportunity is, which I showed in my previous slide, where you saw that big red sign, was that a lot of that can also be taken through the rest of the processes to drive your planning process, to drive your quality process, and this is the opportunity with the use cases that I've already illustrated. But can I ask something right now? Sure. So what you, make, make sure that is, what typically happens, people go and say, I'm gonna go to leverage, uh, understanding a little bit more about my customer, and then they bring it into under, saying, by me understanding that I can go and maybe launch a more uh, effective marketing campaign, all right? So they stop there. So what's happening now, the trend is, is continuing the path. So not only saying I'm gonna go use that to go tackle and acquire more customers or retain existing customers, but move that across the board and say, how is that gonna help me understand the demand of the product as well? So correct. So a lot of that actually gets communicated, and you will see it basically in an email. Basically, marketing later on will come back, or in a board meeting, they'll come back and say, "Hey, we noticed this." And then they'll go tell product engineering, or they will tell the planning group, "This is what's happening." So what we're trying to we're running through a lot is actually running through the whole cycle and pushing it through. But thank you, Kane. A perfect segue into the next slide. Before I go there, the three things correspond to those three high-level use cases that I talked about. So. This is the business process architecture, and pretty soon, taking that one ex particular example, and this is the depiction of what happened in, with that European retailer, to, Kane's, to the point that you just described, Kane, and which I was talking about earlier. So there was a lot of interest in the soccer team that was generated. It came out of, they basically gave us data and said, hey, this is all our data, and by the way, go and look at these blogs we are interested in to see if you can get any insight. Uh, the way we did it, and you see it in the architecture, is it was put in a low-cost Amazon Hadoop, uh, Amazon-based Hadoop infrastructure. Uh, the team did some uh, algorithms to look at look at trend, trends, and out of that came this identification. Like almost six months before, actually the demand was seen that hey, Manchester City. There's a lot of discussions in Manchester City. A lot of the kids. We're getting excited about Manchester City, not only around Manchester, UK, but almost in other parts of Europe. So that triggered the thought process that maybe we should look at this seriously. The other thing that happened there was they took those, so they said, okay, they looked at the historical demand and they compared, where it looked like if you had gone by your traditional planning approach, 
what would have happened there is looking at the historical demand, it would have given, okay, just go and, you know, up, update the forecast for Manchester City by 2%. So now, what the learnings they were getting was that you should look at updating your forecast instead of your 2% by about 20%. Not, now they looked at that and said, hmm, if I do that, now at this point on, you already can do your, they already have a system in place to do the what if scenario analysis based on Oracle's advanced plan. Okay, I'm talking about the Dimantra ASCP combination here. Something that you as already customers of Oracle, if you are already customers of Oracle, you already have, some of you have this in house, along with your Oracle EPS. They basically did the what if in a scenario analysis using the mantra. If you have bump up the demand by 20%, what does that mean? And they found out all bunch of constraints on the supply side that they had to think about. So looking at that information, they had to go back and I said they, the, uh, the, operate, the marketing guys and the sales guys went to operations. Operations said, wait a minute, if this demand comes, we cannot do it because these are all the constraints. They had to make a business decision at a very strategic level to say, do we authorize more investments to go ahead of time and already pre-order a lot of these Manchester City items ahead of time? They had to make a decision and to their credit, they did. Now, to drive home a point, the demand was captured eventually by the competition through the normal AC Nielsen process. But by the time they captured it, it was too late because their supply chain could not fulfill the demand. Okay, the minimum lead time on these items, we, it, we think it is, we don't care to think about it. For example, Nike, if they require nine month lead time to get an item from the time they design to the time that it gets onto the retailers. That's the lead time, even today. So, a lot of these retailers have to make bets up front. And that's one area where if you are in that kind of a uh, business, that's an opportunity for using big data. Take the customer preferences, drive it through your, I mean, your what if scenario analysis to make sure you can do your end-to-end -end business process management, and you get the business benefit out of it. Sorry, there were a few questions. Which one? Okay, how about you? You raised your hand. What's your name? My name is Ishwar. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, what is the actual source of this data that you're talking about? Was it Twitter or Facebook? Or? It was a call. Like I said, if you remember, I said they, the, when I said they, the customer wanted to give a list of blogs, right? So it was a list of blogs, websites, and some, yeah, it was Twitter and also uh, Facebook. Fa so it was bringing that unstructured information in that was not possible with the structure. And was there a software tool for these things, or how was it bringing the unstructured data in? Oh, so they, remember, the their marketing efforts already were bringing this efforts oh. in the data in. My point is, everybody stops at marketing, right? They took it one step further, right? Uh, there was another question. So, uh, when you sorry, what's your name? Issue. When you said that the forecast went up by 20%, how did they baseline it? Because so, were they tracking the same social media a year back also? And that's how they came up that the 2% was a 20%. How did that happen? No, so the difference was the way they were tracking the 2% was through the traditional. What you what they did is look at the last year's history, right? This is typically what you do. The Nielsen method also captured it eventually. Right, so but the, that was being done a year back. Yeah, the but. Yeah, but the Nielsen didn't capture it. If you remember my point, what I said is the Nielsen patterns came in four months later. Got it? So, if we, I mean, they made the bets four months before the competition. This was the key thing. The key point here is, see, it's not, sometimes it's the timeliness of the information that's important. And I'll come to that also in the architecture because there's another thought process that we have as a team that we want to present to you that, Sometimes it's not only about the information, but the timeliness of the information. And this is a little bit more on the technology side, but there are, right now there are opportunities where you can take in-memory analytics to even make real-time planning decisions. And we'll come to that later. Uh, so it was the timeliness of the information, and it was the information gained from the insights from the customer behavior that was then translated through from the front end of the process into the back end to do that business decision making. So the point here is, and you can do it today because 
anyway, you would have, I mean, if you don't have, if you don't have, you have to put the big data infrastructure. And by the way, uh, it's not that expensive if you do it right. Okay, but. That's where some of the big data processing using the MapReduce and all those algorithms come into play. So you need to look for those trends. But That's that would be primarily around the social media because the same uh, the sales people would be talking to the uh, sales channels and getting some numbers there. If some discussion happening in the social media, MapReduce can. But also normally <laughs> the sales would not get it from social media, right? I mean. So sales would get typically from their points into exactly. their partners, right? This, you are getting early one. I mean, this is like your earliest warning system, <laughs> right? You have got the data just when the interaction has happened. So are you saying that the, the superset that you get from social media is the set? Is one of the key sets. And that gave the difference, right? The key difference here was taking the, see, what was the, the noise came from the social media that the parents and kids are all talking about Manchester City. Nobody knew that, right? That didn't translate. Yeah, I mean, you heard it in the newspaper, but it didn't translate it to, hey, I should think about it, that this will result in a huge demand towards the end. So that had a point. You, guys, you bring a really good point. What happens with when you are trying to double up, right? Because you, you have market, you have some uh, something else telling you that this is where the trend is going. And then now you're saying, is that really going to, is the social or whatever that noise you hear, is it embedded in that, exactly. right? So when, when you run through that, you can, the difference right now, what's happening is that data will actually, will gravitate and tell you where it's going now. And you couldn't have that access before when you were doing your forecasting. Mm -hmm. your forecasting before, you would go back to your history, you would go find out what marketing you did in the past of, a, of another product, and you would probably see, that's what happened when I launched this product, I'm launching this product this weekend, this is what happened, but you still have to wait. Correct? And then, even more importantly, how do you connect that reaction all the way to all the different points? So what's happening with the data and social, and, and basically not even social, but more importantly, ability to go grab different data that you couldn't cheaply and fast is that you're going to be able to see those trends. And you can actually see the trends moving. You can actually say, this is where it's going. Maybe I'll take the bet because I see that trend. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, this is the overall uh, like a little bit detailed explanation of that one use case and I want to show you the architecture of how you can achieve that, what is involved. So this, to, I think to the gentleman's point, this is assume that you are getting this in and if you see you're getting it in is through the tradition, I mean you already are doing this or if you're not doing this you can easily do this using the big data infrastructure and data capture. Okay. Uh, basically, you use your structure. Today, you're already doing the structure. I'm not going to talk about it. You're already capturing your structured information through your normal transaction process. For unstructured, you need to capture it using the Hadoop. Okay, and this is all open source. Okay, Amazon based or uh, Apache based. So HDFS, people who don't know, I'm assuming everybody knows this is Hadoop distributed file system. This is where you store unstructured information. And the key difference here is. It, the structure is what they call, what we in the industry we call as NoSQL, not only SQL, because the structured information today is managed mostly through SQL. You do that, and then you acquire it, you organize it. And here is one point I want to make. So in the use case, we will show you how we did it in this particular um, case. Uh, point is, a lot of you are Oracle customers, that's why I'm stressing the Oracle point, and this is something we have discussed also with Oracle that my colleague Manju alluded to, that we are working closely with Oracle product strategy team. Uh, we have ballot, just had a, came out of a meeting last week out of with them where we talked about some of these. So Oracle has actually now come up with the latest version of OBI 11G. They give you what they call as the Oracle data integrator. And that allows you to take information from Hadoop back reduce and you can, uh, on using Apache open source, uh, JDBC based, and I'll show you the details later. You can pull that information into your structured um, uh, system. Okay. So you, uh, by this time, you are taking unstructured information. Your map reduce algorithms. You are taking patterns from the unstructured information that, like Kane mentioned. And now that you have got those patterns, you feed it as a structured information in, into your already existing systems, okay. capable of business intelligence, which are, you are, these already are there, 
uh, today, which is either molar phase, OLAP phase, or OLAP phase, or these are your OBIE, their business intelligence systems, okay? And then from there on, feeding it into your, for example, in that uh, example I gave, running a feed and taking that feed and putting it as an input into a, your, the mantra series, then is already you have the infrastructure in place, okay? So that's how you connect it and then manage it, do your what-if and uh, scenario analysis using the mantra and make the decision. So the key thing today is today, if you look at how the planners do, uh, they will, uh, you already feed uh, information from marketing and sales, uh, taking uh, consensus planning as an example. As a, as a forecast, right? Or you're basically using a lot of your historical information in trying to determine, predict the forecast. That's what the planners do today. The key information here for the planners is getting the insight from uh, the unstructured information to say, in addition to marketing and sales, here's the additional information that validates, you know, your market is saying that this is hot. So that factor is what they gave. So they have confidence in that previous example that I gave. See, if you just see something that you are going to expect, normally you're seeing 4% increase based on your historical shipment. Now suddenly go to 20%. You're not going to automatically use that. You will actually question it. How come? Suddenly this is like an outlier, right? But if you have the insight to say, hmm, to, K, to, to what my colleague Kay already described, here are all the insights. Here is all the description. Here are, is all, like, for example, these are the counts, okay, of how many times kids and parents said they would like to buy Manchester City, right? That gives confidence to the demand planner to actually then believe in that, hey, hype the forecast by 20%. Absolutely, perfect. That's exactly what uh, the solution did, right? Because your current demand track can only understand structured information. Yeah. You can't expect it to understand unstructured information. But the importance of the insight is to help the human being here, the demand planner, believe that, okay, they need to bump up their forecast by 20%. So converting the statement, like, I like Manchester United, into a count of one, yeah. that is done by both. That, that is, yeah, that is the specialized IP that we bring in. We will talk more about it. So let me make a comment. We, we do it with our process. We have RP, but Oracle also has. Yeah. We, 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 we I'll, I'll come to that. Uh, yeah. But that we, the, the glue, the glue, right, on how to do it is what we bring. Uh, Kane was just making the point, and that's why I want to drive with it. Oracle has also now come up with the infrastructure that helps you do this. Exactly that. Sentimental analysis. Okay. It does it really well. It, it, I think it's pretty innovative. And if you are an Oracle shop, I think it makes a lot of sense for you to leverage it. At the time we did it though, Oracle didn't have yeah, it, so they did it without Oracle. Yeah. So that you will see also in the case study. Manjay, you want to add something? Yeah, so I go to one point question. to keep in mind is, see, technology is only a part of the equation. Understanding the business, like in your case, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, we were talking to Starbucks and uh, Everybody knows Starbucks coffee cake and the different flavors of coffee, right? So when we were talking to them and uh, we were looking at the data and so on and basically said, hey, there's a pattern of how people return coffees, right? The drinkers have particular, kind, these are uh, more expensive coffees than the standard coffee, but many times they say the coffee doesn't taste good and uh, so they return it and for us it's a labor cost plus the coffee cost plus the time lost, right? So now this is understanding business. Now I drink coffee so I understand what it is and so on. Then we started looking for patterns around, along with the coffee, what else was sold. Then it turned out the particular African coffee with a particular uh, cinnamon bread, that combination, majority of the people don't like it. So whenever that is sold, the chances of coffee being returned is higher. Now the point I'm trying to make is, your, the specialized IP, there's a, when you double click it, it's a combination of understanding business, setting the business rules, even going to the extent of understanding natural language processing. So it will be like, specific to the industry, vertical, every industry. There, is, there is going to be a variations of it. 80% uh, will be kind of same. You want to set up a business rules and so on. 
there's a comment where there's a sarcasm, where they use a four-letter word plus something, right? The algorithms are now getting smarter, but there is always a company-specific information that has to go into it. But the moment, and to conclude my example, the moment we established a combination, that drove a different business behavior. Now, when you look at these architectures, think of the business, think of why a standard solution by itself won't solve, but your standard solutions can get you 80% there. It's a 20% which will make the remaining difference. Thank you, Manju. Now, I just want to add to what Manju said. He gave you an example of that African coffee and the lemon case cinnamon. was it cinnamon. cinnamon that didn't work, right? right? But in that particular, there was one insight where it said people would, if you actually, what you forgot to do, you forgot to bundle that African coffee, right, with uh, the banana cake, right. right? And imagine that now you learn that you can take that, what we, for this customer, we said now you also figure out whether if you offer that as a combination, what will it do to your supply chain? Because now you have to combine that African coffee with the banana cake. So that insight also now taking it from the front end to your planning system is what we're talking about here as well. And you can manage the services of the Exactly, exactly, exactly. Because see, you, the last thing you want to do is make a promotion decision, right? And then find out that your organization is not able to fulfill it. So not only are you reducing your price per unit, but then you can't fulfill it. That means you re remove, you are actually at a loss or worse off than without making the promotion. So at this point of time, uh, I'm going to, oh, one more point. Uh, I think Kane mentioned this. this that particular organized, uh, acquire and organize, now Oracle has got a stack that they have actually built to enable this. Pretty much it's based on their, uh, I already talked about ODI, ODI, but Oracle, they call it the big data appliance. And they also have the whole infrastructure based on Exadata and Exadatics, okay? Um, this Hadoop cluster, this can be open source. Oracle has now fine-tuned their offering to take information that I was talking about from MapReduce to the Hive server. This is also open source based on uh, Apache. And what they have done is provided this ODI, which has the option, uh, which helps uh, you use a, what is called as a high query language, okay? It's a structure similar to SQL that allows you to take the insights out of MapReduce and you can sit on top of the high server and pick information and now feed it into your traditional BI systems. We have done it similarly, but in a different infrastructure, which I'll let Kane talk about shortly. Uh, just want to share that with you, since a lot of you are customers uh, of Oracle. And this is something we just talked about with the Oracle product strategy team just two weeks ago. And um, the concept that I'm, uh, I've presented along with Manjo, we are also going to present this in a little bit more detail along with Oracle at the Oracle Open World. Okay? And there'll be a webinar also we'll be hosting shortly on this topic as well. So with this, I'm going to now go into the case study along with the help of my colleagues. So this is an actual example of how we took big, how we use big data to learn about customer insights, and then it has led to a complete change in the way the organization's strategy works. So Kane and Manju, I'll turn it over to you guys. Kane, you are very much involved in this, so why don't you come up? Oh, okay, I'll, I'll take care. Please, go ahead, come on. Oh, yeah. I always talk, so go ahead, go ahead. I'm the big talker here. All right, <clears throat> so before we go into the case study itself, I'll tell you first the reaction, what we got from the room of about 15 core experts in the company. This is a big toy manufacturing company. If you have kids, there's a 95% chance you have the toy at your home. But I, we can't disclose that because I'll tell you the reaction and, and the re then you'll know why we can't disclose who it is. After we did our analysis and study, and when they saw the outcomes, they said, this is going to fundamentally change our business. It's going to change our strategy. iPad is killing us. iPad apps are killing us. Now this insight means we are going to go top down and change this. Now, for obvious reasons, now they want to be ahead of the competition and they don't want to disclose uh, who we are, who they are, and so on. So the, the secret sauce here is, not so much about the technology power. Everybody knows, HANA technology. 
microsecond response time, in-memory computing, XLATX, Exadata. These are all today what you could not imagine uh, even possible 10 years back. Today is available at such low price. Technology is there. See, where the marriage between Gotri and Oracle works is where we bring in the business and the uh, technology together, understand the client's business and drive business change. And we are presenting this to a CEO in the next one week. And unless something is, our story is so powerful and compelling, the CEO would not give us time on the board and so on, right? Now let's go into the case study. Big data social mining. We've written a lot of white papers, we talked to tons of customers and so on, but translating is the key, right? It's, uh, what we have done here is we looked at this toy manufacturing company, they had tons of data. Everybody buys toys, some of them register, some of them go comment on the blogs, some of them response complaints, issues, returns. You have information coming in all forms, textual information, numerical information, and so on. Now, for them, it's data is data. Now, business is declining. What do we do? We, we have a huge customer base. We've been in business for 15 years. Now, these new iPads and all these devices are coming, and phones, and they're killing us. So we looked at, and, and first comes first, what is it that you are trying to accomplish? What is your business challenge? And what they want is we want to retain our customers, increase their life, uh, lifetime value, and, and may obviously make more money, right? So now that is the business driver, right? Obviously, uh, everybody has been dealing with tons of uh, BI tools. Now, what's fundamentally different? What is fundamentally different is the following. Your processing power is exponentially cheaper. Your memory is exponentially cheaper. The tons of data that you acquired, even over 20 years, now you can process and get a response time in milliseconds. Now, that sounds, yeah, that's cool, but what does it mean? What it means is when we demonstrated this use case with the actual report and actual data, some of the real samples, now, did you know that when you sell these toys for who have kids between three to five years, your revenue is almost double compared to kids who are one to two years old or six to seven years old. They did not know that. Did you know that parents who have two kids spend more money on your toys than parent who has one kids or five kids? They did not know that. Did you know that when you sell A with B and, and that too, within the first one week is when you have most chance of upsell and cross-sell. They, they did not know, they always thought that customers drop off pretty soon, but there's a reason why they drop off within the first one week. They're playing there. And if they can't convert that right away into selling an additional app or additional something, interest is gone. Once you throw the toy, then it's done. Did you know that <clears throat> if these are the defects coming in your product, and you need to, if you fix this, the chance of your products selling is higher. That's a product feature. If you remember the three things that Salil mentioned earlier, improving your cost, demand signals, improving your uh, uh, productivity. These are all different elements. Whatever answers that we give, led into product feature improvement. Led into better demand signal. Where do we focus on? Which customer? How much will we sell? If we launch this, what does it mean? Like this, the, I gave you only about five insights, right? We gave about 30 such insights. In, in two hours, once this core set of team looked at it and they said, wow, this is gonna change our business. Now that's the power of big data and social mining, right? What you could not do before, you can do it now. Now again, technology is only, it's just opening the door, but what you do with it how you marry your business and how you carry your entire supply chain to drive this is the most important thing. It's not just for marketing to say, oh, I know all these things, let me go pro launch a promotion. Like he said, is your supply chain ready for it? Are the planners really understanding what this demand means? Right? When it's declining, when it declines, the sooner you cut off and switch to the next one, you're better off in saving money. Now, supply demand balance. A very well known fact that we always try to have a perfect supply demand balance, right? and there is always an imbalance. Big data, while well, I've written a lot of white papers on this, and certainly in appropriate settings, I do say that don't get overwhelmed or over, you know, overshadowed with what the real stuff is. It's all about searching data faster, better, and accurate information.
Google helped us do that 13 years back. Or 10 years back. It's nothing but an exponential expo usage of the same thing, except that now we are putting in a domain-centric con context. So, with this case study, with the underlying architecture that we showed and, and everything else with, that we laid out, right? Now, this is a real customer. Like that, we have other customers. So, Kane and some of our teams, they worked on it. What, what's different here is, and in fact, it's interesting when we have these discussions with Oracle on our thought leadership and how we have done this for customers, right? They tell us, right, hey, we have a struggle to sell our licenses. We have all these extra analytics, extra data, big data plans. Customers, you put it in front of them, they say, okay, looks good, now how do I use this, right? It's like, it's like you want to sell a Ferrari, great, but you have to articulate what's the use, purpose, and everything, right? So that's where our manager is working out very well. Kane, do you want to add anything yeah, about the other bring up the slides. You want to bring up the um, Actually, that's a good segue. You, typically, you approach these, thanks, Manjit. Uh, let me give you a little bit of background about myself. Actually, my past life, I, for 10 years, I ran a uh, global supply chain for a company called Gutty Ranker, the big infomercial company. Everything before outsourcing was trendy, we were doing it. So we had offices in Germany, UK, Asia, India, you name it, we were doing it and Oracle couldn't handle a lot of the things, so you had to take Oracle and grab the data and still bring it into Excel and do a lot of the demand and forecasting. So I was in charge of that group for about 10 years, and then after that I got into analytics and deployed a SaaS a Cloud BI product full out and sold it, and then I, I've been working with Gotree for a couple of years already, and I ran the analytics uh, division. Uh, for most of our, what Manjit said earlier, but most of our cases, when we engage with the customer, we engage with first, what's the business driver? What's the issue? How do you handle that? And then you tackle everything. It, it's true, you're not gonna bring in a server and say we're gonna go handle big data with Hadoop and all that. None of that makes sense. People are not really gonna listen to you unless you have a lot of money and you have a lot of time and you're pretty innovative and you can run these, uh, what do you call it, a SWAT, uh, initiatives uh, behind without nobody knowing what's happening, then you bring it about. That's the other way too. When it came to customers, we've worked with uh, Expedia, Sony, Disney, uh, Cisco, a couple of them. This, uh, I feel very excited about this customer. I guess maybe every single time I have a new customer, I feel more excited and it's the new, my new girlfriend, I guess you would say. But with this customer, I'm extremely excited because literally I would see people saying, Kane, I want to learn more about what's happening with the data. First, the, the question was, can I go grab social and clickstream data? Clickstream is this, the, all, everything related to, you know, you go to a website, and you start clicking on it and everything. Can I marry that with social commentary and bring that back? That's the way they came to us. They said, I think we need help with that. When we actually went in there <coughs> and ran through the whole process, and people always talk about KPIs, key performance indicators and metrics, and what are the key questions, we actually went and documented 40. You know, typically in other companies we document 100 or 200, and then at the end, you also, KPI should, should be about five or, or 10. We then focused on five, you know, customer lifetime value, being able to understand who your customer is, and understanding that life value from the beginning all the way to the end. And, and, and well, you know, the, once you acquired a customer, how fast were they dropping, or how fast were they, you know, were, were we still retaining that customer as well. But the more important from that is building a use case, a business use case actually building a story and saying, before we even embark on a big data project, what does that look like? And it's not gonna look like, I'm just gonna put servers. <coughs> you're actually gonna put a story down, and you're gonna say, this is gonna be my return on analytics, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go tackle that. From that, we built three. One was for clickstream, one was for social, and the other one happens to be related to all the game log data associated with the devices. So some of these devices that they were actually bringing about, they actually collect the logs, but they were actually not using the logs. So you hear about other companies out in, in Facebook um, uh, that, that are actually using the log data to change the games rapidly. So there's new levels in gaming, correct? <coughs> when it came to this company, literally a lot of the data was being tracked. Now what's happening with the results of running through the process is we're actually grabbing and understanding the level of detail from even when they turn off the device, what they're pressing. If they're stuck in the level, you know, my, my seven-year-old says, I hate this level, this is so boring. It, but he's saying it. But who's capturing that, correct? So now we're actually logging that data 
and say this kid is getting stuck in this level, so why do we build 15 levels in the product if only kids get to the seventh level? Very critical. If you think about that, that, every, that has everything to do with the product engineering. So we have all the groups represented. We have marketing, we have product engineering, we have BI, we have IT, you name it, was present in the whole process of this initiative. And at the end, they're literally coming back, they're literally coming back and going through the process of saying, this is the way we're gonna run through the process and how are we gonna leverage it and how are we gonna change some of that things. Do uh, you guys have any other, any other questions? I don't think I uh, can yeah, wrap it up. Quick question. What, uh, what specific data mining technique or solver are you using? Perfect, I'll, I'll give you an example. I can, mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll, so we use the, in this case, we use, they're an Oracle shop. Mm -hmm. So we, you have to be very cognizant that if you have an existing uh, platform, you, you have to figure out if not to bring something completely new and revamp there. So we decided to keep the Oracle. They're using OBIE. Uh, they're using Cognos for some of the financial planning. They're using Informatica to move a lot of the data. And in this instance, we're using a software called Tableau to overlay it, to visualize that. Visualize. And for the data mining specifically, yeah. We're using Open R. You can use SAS or SPSS, which I've done in the past for about 10 years. But Open R, right now, I don't know if you guys know about the, the, the technology. It's actually open source. It's open source, and there's a lot of libraries, and people are actually going through it. And you're actually able to see trends. And let me give you one really good trend right here. They're able to actually figure out that that when they were actually uh, positioning their campaign to the households of children, they were able to say. I'm gonna go, I think that if there's a household of three or four or five children, is that more important? They were, we were actually, through the data, able to bucket what households of one, two, three, four, and five. And now, just, just recently, we introduced and said that after two child in the household, it doesn't matter. So what does that mean? That means that they don't have to actually spend all that money for a household that has three or four or five children. The key number is two. That's very critical. So in that case, we used OpenR to do the, and then, and then we used um, Tableau to do the facilitation. But you can use, there's a lot of other t tools out there. Uh, Altrix, there's a lot of other ways where you can start matching data and stuff like that. Any, yeah. any other questions? Yeah. They... Great, mm. very good. We have about eight minutes, so we can take more questions. I, I thought he said wrap it up, no? No, eight minutes, we have eight minutes. To oh, really, okay. Any other, sorry, I tried to rush through that pretty quick at the end, but. Any other points? Yeah, are, are any of you, if you're interested in uh, like uh, doing something like this or in any of your companies, that will be? Yeah, if you guys, are, well, you guys have any questions. So, uh, Botry, we've been doing this for, for quite some time. We're a big Oracle shop as well, correct? We do this in SAP, MicroStrategy, Tableau. Uh, you name it, we've been doing it. And we strategically try to focus only on the core right now. Uh, there's a few companies out there like Cloudera, Tableau, or the only core, maybe off the market ones that, that we're, we're working on. If you guys have something, or if you guys just need an ear, a question, and maybe six months later or something, something happens, you know, we're, we're here to help. Okay. Do you have a, a product now? A what? Do you have product now? A product? We are a, yeah. We, are a solutions we do. Company. Yeah. A solution. We have an IT, uh -huh. and uh, we, we, the way our IT works is we have in husband knowledge and expertise that we have built, we have bundled into a package called Midas. Mm -hmm. uh, but that works in conjunction with Oracle, SAP, Salesforce, whatever else you bring in into the ecosystem, it works with it. I see. Okay. To add to what he said, uh, we are technology agnostic, but we are a big on Oracle uh, also, uh, and we are big on big data. So yeah. we, another thing that we've got is IP on how you enable the collaboration. So we call it shared tree. And we all, all, of, all, the, all the time when you have, when you're managing data sometimes, especially customer data, right? And then dissemination of that information, especially some of it is applicable for higher management executives, some of it, so you have to monitor the security, especially the rendering. So we have an offering also that enables you to in, implement the security rules, right? That's why you saw that triangle that we described in the beginning, that we bring in security, we bring in the ability to collaborate, and uh, essentially make the whole business productive. In fact, so we even feel proud to say that one of the product that we built, we sold it to Cisco, and Cisco sell, sells it as part of the standard license for security offering, and has enabled in their own infrastructure. Great, good, great. And then, uh, last but not the least, the domain knowledge, like, I mean, Manju, Kane, myself, 
we are all experts in supply chain or in the, even in the uh, front end of the process, like the CRM process. I have not only done supply chain implementations, I've even done CRM implementation using Salesforce as an example. Yeah. So that wealth of knowledge of understanding the domain from, that's why we call it value chain, not just value chain planning, is the entire value chain management from a business perspective and how to take the technology and make a difference to the customer. That's what we are all about. Have you worked with the uh, Amazon, you know, e-commerce lab in uh, near airport, you know, San Bruno? No, I, yeah, Amazon's here. Yeah. Amazon, yeah. yeah. No, have the Amazon ad lab called the uh, e-commerce lab near South, uh, in South, San, near, San, I, think, I think it's in San Bruno, yeah. Oh, mind you. It's a big lab not, over there. We have not worked with it. We have not, use this? Huh? We use uh, Amazon, 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 Amazon for, for our Oh, oh, okay. There's a question over here. Yeah. You guys um, work with Mantra as well? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So yeah. We've done multiple implementation. I myself have done a whole bunch of implementation. Oh, good. In fact, some of the product ideas that we are giving to the Demantra product engineering in Oracle, we take this knowledge, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're actually redesigning some of them. Right. And, and some of the key people, we're challenging them, why does Demantra need to run this way? Why can't you change the architecture? So this makes logical sense, but you know it takes us this much time in Oracle to sell the idea. I have a Uncle Oracle. I haven't talked to them since we've been around. They've been asking questions about Mantra. Excuse me, my card is connected, though. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. There's another question over here. Yeah. I can, uh, I'll have to refine this, right, and then send it to Eric Princeton, who is my contact and I'll leave some cards over here. You can always reach out to yeah, me. Unfortunately, and I have only one card left. <laughs> but anyway, between can, can use. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.